dominant second half performance, he shall overcome the challenge of the 10 men of Drought United with a 4 2 win at Weavers Park this evening, shall securing fourth place in the Premier Division table. A brace for Jack Moylan on his final game for the Reds, and goals from Will, Jer- Will Jervis and Paddy Barrett were crucial as Damien Duff's side fought back from two goals down, the home side leading. The game had few highlights in the opening period of the first half, although Hull Loney's Harry Wood and Will Jarvis linked up on multiple occasions to create half chances for a side. The most clear-cut chance of the game also came through the work of Wood and Jarvis, with Wood turning and playing a beautiful defence-splitting pass through, the, the, through to the on, on, on-rushing Jarvis. The young winger looks certain to score, but a combination of a lacklustre effort and Andrew Rogan standing strong meant After growing into the game thanks to some tidy passages of play from Darren Markey and Dale Rooney that ultimately led to nothing, the point siders broke the deadlock. Rooney collected the ball just outside the Shelburne box and clipped the ball into the penalty area with his weaker right foot. Adam Foley looked to head the ball but failed to make contact and Kyle Robinson did the same. But in the chaos of the box, Rooney's initial cross was able to bounce past Kearns and gave, gave the home side the lead. A minutes after the restart, Drogheda were two to the good, thanks to Adam Foley. Rooney delivered a free kick from a similar position to where he scored the opener, this time delivering with his left. Although the ball was headed away initially, the clearance was poor and fell to Foley, who smashed a first-time volley past the helpless Kearns to double his side's advantage. The second half started with a flurry of instants before the error mark, which saw Shelburne draw level and Drogheda re- reduce to 10 left wing where Jarvis clipped the ball to last week's hero Jack Moylan. Moylan spun to create space for himself after controlling the delivery and fired past Wogan to cut Trotter's lead to one goal. Right after the restart Kevin Doherty's 11 men became 10 as Luke Healy made a reckless lunge on Jarvis sparking an unsurprisingly re- angry reaction from Shelburne staff and players as Heaney was shown a second yellow for his, his sh- second yellow of the game. In the 55th minute of, or in the 55th minute of the game Shelburne levelled through the efforts of Will Jarvis. Shane Farrells tried on two occasions to smash the ball past the wall of the players, the second of which fell to Jarvis. Jarvis, with the help of a slight deflection, directed the ball past Wogan into the bottom corner. The comeback was complete on the 64th minute, when Jack Moylan notched his, sec- his second of the game and his fifth in two games in two days. Wood was again involved as he managed to work the ball into the box, and as it rolled through the defence, to pass the ball home, giving his side the first lead of the day. The Reds scored their fourth goal of the game when Wood swung a corner in towards Parry Barrett, who towered over everyone as he powered, powerfully headed past Wogan with 10 minutes remaining, and the game would finish with the scoreline. The game changed after the red card, but Shelburne had already gained momentum at this stage after scoring. Shelburne fans will now be looking for a St. Patrick's Athletic jersey to loan for next week's FAI Cup final, and judging by the celebrations at full time, the Reds believe in the side. Full time here at Weavers Park. Draw the United 2, Shelburne 